So in uh, First Peter chapter two verse five, now we're getting into the teaching. This teaching will bless you. It will change your life if you pay attention to what God is about to do today. Your life will be really blessed, you know, forever. Amen. Yes, it's a, it's a teaching that can take you through your lifetime. One of the things I want to say to us is that, you know, our relationship with God is not a one-off thing. Our relationship with God is a, supposed to be a lifetime thing. Amen. And also life is not uh, a relay. Life is a marathon journey. It's a journey, but it's a long-time journey. So there are some things that needs to be in us that will equip us to continue winning. Amen. You know, some people just say, oh, give me a miracle and let me go. But you're going to need another miracle tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You're going to need another miracle next week, next month. So how do you position yourself to receive continuous blessings from God? Can I hear amen? Because God wants to bless us continually. So the way to do that is to understand that there is the person of Jesus and there are principles of Jesus. The, pers the, the person of Jesus will guarantee you instant salvation. Amen. But the principles of Jesus will take you through the journey of your life. Mm -hmm. Can I hear amen? amen? And there is, you know, uh, this, the, 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 the experience with God and there's the expertise of God. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have an experience... But what you need is an expertise. That is, you have a way of doing things continually. And that's why we're going into this covenant so that we can understand. There is the love of God and there is the law of God. There are two forces. These are two primary forces that will shape a person's life. The love of God and the law of God. There is the Son of God and there are the systems of God. There is, you know, one, of, one is of the mind, the other one is of the heart. So we need to understand how God blesses us. And what I want to share with you today is what we have found in uh, the scriptures concerning uh, God's plan to build us up. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible says, You as lively stones are built up a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer us spiritual sacrifices to God acceptable uh, to God by Jesus Christ. Amen. You as lively stones are built up. God wants to build us up. Amen. But we need to be lively stones. Somebody say lively stones. Lively. So I want to speak to us on what I have titled, what it means to be a lively stone. Because God is the master builder of our lives. Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain, that builds it. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. So God is the master builder, but God wants to walk with lively stones. Take note, he said, lively stones, not dead stones. What is the difference between a lively stone and a dead stone? A dead stone is a stone that is unusable mm. by the builder. It's a, st a stone that does not respond to the dictates, the commands of the builder. But a lively stone is a stone that the builder can, you know, and move around as it pleases him. So we are supposed to be stones in the hand of God that God can position us, move us around, take us, or use us for whatever he wants to do. Do I have an amen in the house? Amen. I said, do I have an amen in the house? Amen. So a dead stone is a stone that does not respond or does not comply to the dictates of the builder. But a lively stone is a stone that can be positioned, repositioned, or a stone that, you know, is there to fulfill the builder's desire. That's why if you go to the building site, you see some stones are cut, some stones, you know, are shaped, depending on where the builder wants to use and, or how the builder wants to use the stone. So that's how our life is supposed to be in the hand of God. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Yeah, we should be able to present, if I say present your life, your body unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Be available for God to use your life, amen. whichever way he wants to you. And God has a way of teaching us what he wants us to do. Every time God speaks, God speaks in pictures. Every time God speaks to us, he speaks in pictures. And every time God wants to teach us things, he uses metaphors that we can relate with. For instance, in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6, God wants to teach us diligence. diligence. So he said, go to the earth and learn 
you know, wisdom from the hand. Go to the hand, Proverbs chapter 6. Go to the hand, use slogan. Consider our ways and be wise. So when you look at the ant, you might think the ant is uh, a tiny little piece of uh, creature which you can just, you know, stamp your feet on and just crush. But God says you can learn wisdom from it. He says because the ant has no guide or ruler, but the ant has a way of surviving. Hello, somebody. So God is saying, yeah, but it, it, it knows how to prepare its meat. So God wants us to learn from the ant. Sometimes God will tell us, you know, to look at a tree. He said, you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You are the trees of righteousness. So God uses what we can see, nature, to teach us, or things around us, to teach us what he wants us to be like. Now, in this build up here, God is saying he wants us to be lively stones. Can I hear your amen? amen? So what does it mean to be a stone, a lively stone? And we have looked at many things which I don't want to go about. I mean, but one of the things, go through again, but I'm not going to jump into where God wants us to start. One of the basic things you can know about a stone is that a stone is stable. A stone is stable. A stone is not double-minded. <laughs> a stone remains constant. A stone is the same. And I keep telling you about the stone in front of my house. I mostly saw it this morning. Some stones in my house. They've been where they have been positioned from the time I've known them by a tree. Just surrounded a tree. That's how the builder wanted it to be. And they've been there. So God wants us to be stable. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. A stone also does not change. It does not change. You know, it does, it's not a stone today, tomorrow, or something else. So God wants us to be constant in our lives. So we've looked at 